Hello and welcome to the last section of the book. Uh, 12.7, we're going to be dealing with um, similar, similar shapes or similar figures, uh, solids in particular today. Here are the answers to uh, 12.6, dealing with surface area and volume of a sphere. Okay, so like I said, what we're going to be working on today is See, figuring out the ratio of uh, similar solids. So two solids, first of all, are similar um, if they have the same, the, the ratio is the same for any corresponding linear measurements. And these can be things such as radius or height, length, width, um, any, any linear unit, they have to have the same ratio. Um, so like these have this. These two have like the same. They have the the ratio. Their their ratio of their radiuses are the same, and their ratio of their heights are the same. Versus here, you can see the heights are identical, but the ratios of the the uh, the radiuses are or the radii are from they're, they're they're different. So there's no way that those can be the same because the heights are the same, but the radiuses are the same. Um, technically, we don't know if these blue ones are similar. Um, because they don't give us any measurements, but just to kind of give you guys a visual of what that would look like. Um, any two cubes are similar because they're side length, side length, side length, and side length, side length, side length. So, and any two spheres are gonna be similar because the only linear unit, unit there is the radius. And so if you see any two spheres, they're always gonna be similar, kind of like any two circles are always similar. Um, just like any two squares are always similar. Um, so yeah, all right. So here it says tell whether the given rectangle, right, the given right rectangular prism is similar to the right rectangular prism shown um, at the right. So we're gonna see which one is similar to this one. So here I have the two to two, so that's a one to one ratio, and then I have four to two, so it can't be that one. All right, uh, let's see, four to six, two to three and two to three, so it's gonna be this one here because these all reduce to four, six, two, three, and two, three. So there you go, uh, those, that's, our, that's our winner right there. All right, now we've seen these types of relationships before in the earlier chapter, we're dealing with perimeter and dealing with area. It's very, very similar here. Um, if the two, solids are similar, then their surface area is the ratio squared, and their volume is the ratio cubed. So all of these problems are gonna be done the same. And I'm gonna, before I do this, uh, this peach problem, I'm gonna do this one here. Uh, solid one and solid two are similar. They have a scale factor of three to four. If solid one has a surface area of 50 square units, what is the surface area for solid two? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this three to four ratio and I'm gonna square it to get the ratio for their surface area, so nine to 16. And I'm gonna set that up equal to 50 over, we'll call this surface area. So then I just cross multiply 50 times 16 equals nine times surface area and then divide by nine. And then that would be your answer, whatever that is. And then if solid two has a volume of 130 cubic units, what is the volume of solid one? So now instead of using the, the ratio squared, I'm gonna use the ratio cubed. So it's gonna be nine over four times four times four is 64. That's the ratio I'm gonna use. The volume of solid two is 130. We can find the volume of solid one. So we do 130 times nine equals 64 times V divided by 64. And then whatever that answer number is right there will be your volume. And that's basically all you do for these problems. Uh, so the cans shown are similar with a scale factor of 87 to 100. Okay, find the surface area and the volume of the larger can. Okay, so the cans shown are similar with a scale factor of 87. That's a really, really annoying scale factor. Find the surface area. So I'm not gonna use that number. I'm gonna do 87 squared over 100 squared equals, and then surface area of, see the can, let's see, find the surface area and the volume of the largest. So they give us, they give us these values here. So 
51.84 over surface area. And you just solve that, and then you just do the same thing, only you do 87 cubed, and I'm just trying to not use the calculator here, over 100 cubed equals 28.27 over volume. I suppose I should maybe solve one of these. I'm just going to grab my calculator here. So 51.84 squared times 100 squared divided by 87 squared gives me an answer that does not make any sense. 3,550. I thought it would be closer. Okay, so I just... Uh, looked at my calculator and I realized that um, I typed in 51.84 squared. And so what I just did is a good idea of like looking to see if your answer makes sense. They have a ratio of 87 to 100. They're fairly close in size. So this definitely doesn't make sense. So what I, I'm gonna redo this 51.84, not squared this time, 100 squared, and then divided by 87. So it's kind of a good skill to have because Analyzing your answer and seeing whether or not it actually makes sense is important because I caught a I caught a mistake there. Um, all right, so this one's going to be one hundred cubed uh, times twenty eight point two seven, and then we're going to divide this by eighty seven cubed, and I end up with volume equals forty two point nine three. Uh, just so you guys know, when you're doing eighty seven cubed in your calculator, you're going to use a little mountain symbol there. So that's, that's how you can type that into your calculator. Okay, we did that. Uh, the pyramids are similar. Uh, pyramid P has a volume of 1,000 cubic units, and pyramid Q has a volume of 216 cubic units. Find the scale factor pyramid P to pyramid Q. So we're going to go backwards now, so we've seen this scale before. Um, so we're gonna, the scale factor pyramid P, which has a volume the volume ratio is 1,000 over 216. And so what we want to do is we want to find the cube root is what it's called. And you guys are going to be doing a lot of this in um, algebra two. It's like the square root, but it's a cube root. So like what number times itself gives you 1,000. And there's actually a button on your calculator that will do this. You type in three, and then there's this little X root button on your calculator. So you type in three, for the cube root, and then you just type in your number, 1,000. Well, that's just going to be 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. But and then six, and then if you didn't know what the cube root of uh, 216, that'd be six because it's um, six times six is 36 times six is 216. And then you'd want to make sure you reduce this, and so your scale factor is five to three. And then there's your assignment. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed the last lesson. And uh, I actually just changed this. Um, I made these challenge questions 19 through 21. They are, they're great questions. They just uh, they take a little more work. Um, so if you'd like a little more of a challenge and want a little more work, you can do this. If not, you can skip those.